Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about what are the big five personality traits. So if you are somebody who has ever taken uh, like an intro to psych course or a personality psychology course, you will have heard of the big five personality traits. Basically, this is the most common and the most popular way of thinking about personality um, within the field of personality psychology. And the big five is made up of five main traits, which basically um, are used to describe the concept of personality. And these five traits are openness to experience, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. But before we get any further, I'd like to go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Dr. Sherry Krizaniak. I specialize in social and personality psychology. My PhD is in experimental psychology. The goal of my channel is to teach you about various topics in psychology, both from an academic perspective, as well as from a perspective uh, that focuses on how you can use psychology in your everyday life. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, please make sure to subscribe. So let's go through each of the traits and I'll kind of describe what each one is, what it looks like, uh, what somebody who is high or low in each of these traits would look like. So first we have the trait of openness to experience. So somebody who is very high in this particular trait um, is going to be a more creative person. They're going to uh, enjoy new experiences. They'll seek out novelty. They might be very imaginative. They might really love abstract ideas and kind of wrestling with new concepts, things that challenge their beliefs. They might be more curious than other people um, and have a real love of the arts and really anything that is creative. So these people are generally your musicians, your artists, your scientists. So anybody who loves doing new things, who loves challenging themselves and thinking in new ways. Somebody who is very low in openness to experience is going to be considered to be a more conventional kind of person. They're going to be more rooted in tradition. They might prefer less change, so their routine might be very, very structured, and that's how they work best. And they might be more conservative in their beliefs. So the second trait we're going to look at of the Big Five is conscientiousness. So a person who is very high in conscientiousness um, is going to be someone who is really organized and detail-focused. Uh, they're probably going to really excel at their job. Conscientiousness is a predictor of uh, both job satisfaction and job performance. So generally more conscientious people, they just do better in their job. Um, they're going to be really reliable, really dutiful. They're going to meet their obligations. They're going to do what they need to do when they do it. They're not going to procrastinate very often, and they're just going to be really good with their time. Somebody who is especially low in conscientiousness, they're not going to be very organized. They're going to be probably more messy with their space, more messy with their time. So if they say that they're going to meet you at 3 o'clock on a Sunday, they might be late <laughs> by 10 or 20 minutes. They're probably going to be more laid back. They go with the flow. They don't worry so much about being rigid with a schedule or uh, with their life. But you could also think of these people as maybe not being very disciplined. And also they might kind of thrive off of chaos more so. So next we have the personality trait of extroversion. So somebody who is highly extroverted is going to be very out. Going. They're going to be the life of the party. They're going to love to interact with people. Um, they're going to have a really high energy level. So they just want to get out and do things. They're going to be considered more sociable. Um, something that people don't always think about with extroversion is that it also encompasses assertiveness. So somebody who is highly extroverted um, is going to be more confident around people. They're going to be better leaders. Extroversion is also associated with impulsivity. So maybe um, acting out before you really think about what you're doing. But extroversion is also a very positive trait in that extroversion is associated with positive emotions. So being happy, 
more of the time, experiencing those good emotions. Somebody who is low in extroversion is going to be more reserved, uh, possibly more socially withdrawn, depending on how introverted the person is. They're just going to be more quiet, more calm. They don't really need to interact with people as much as, say, an extrovert does. Like, extroverts thrive off of social energy, while introverts, while they may... It's not that they don't enjoy social activity, they just don't need it as much. It is important to note that while extroversion is associated with positive emotions, this does not mean that introversion or low extroversion is associated with negative emotions. That's not the case at all. It just means that introverts don't necessarily experience all of the high uh, positive emotions that extroverts do. So the next trait on the list is agreeableness. So somebody who is highly agreeable is going to be a more friendly person in social situations. They're going to be more trusting of others. Um, they're going to be more cooperative. They're going to want to help others more and get along with people. So the highly agreeable person, um, the way that I like to think about it is that this is the person who wants to get along with others and they want everybody to kind of get along. They really don't like conflict and they will try to avoid that. Um, so this is the person who is going to be more friendly. Um, they're going to really try to get along with people and they are more likely to conform to a situation if it means kind of keeping the harmony within a group uh, rather than being that dissenting opinion that gets everybody's feathers ruffled. Somebody who is really low in agreeableness, they kind of thrive off of conflict to a certain extent. They might be considered more competitive individuals, so they might do really well in uh, maybe a competitive atmosphere at work where they have to really battle to get to the top. They could also be considered more argumentative because they're just willing to enter into those types of situations compared to somebody who is really high in agreeableness. Um, but on the negative side of things, they could also be considered to be more selfish individuals because they don't care quite as much about how other people necessarily see them or getting into arguments with other people. And they could also be considered to be somewhat distant. And finally, we have our last big five personality trait, which is neuroticism. So somebody who is highly neurotic uh, would be considered to be a more anxious individual. They would be more prone to experiencing anxiety and depression. Um, they could also be considered to be more moody, so they might actually have more mood swings, also called emotional volatility. So somebody who is highly neurotic is more aware of potential threats within their environment both imaginary and perceived, so you could consider them to be um, a little bit more paranoid compared to the average person. Basically, neuroticism is not considered to be a positive trait. It is associated with, with a higher likelihood of experiencing mental illness and basically just having negative emotions, generally speaking. Somebody who is low in neuroticism is considered to be more emotionally stable. So it's not that they are going to experience more positive emotions, as we know that this is really better exemplified through the trait of extroversion, but somebody who is low in neuroticism is just less likely to experience those negative types of emotions like anxiety, like sadness and depression. They're less likely to experience those things. They're gonna be more relaxed. They're going to be more level-headed. So they can be put into a really stressful situation and somebody who is really low in neuroticism is going to be really good at handling that because they're not going to let that stress get to them. It's not going to affect them emotionally as much as somebody who is really high in neuroticism. Um, and somebody who is low in neuroticism is just going to be more content with their life. They're going to be better at handling their emotions. Okay, well now you know what the big five traits are and how scientists describe them. But why do we have the big five traits in the first place? I mean, isn't personality so much more broad than just these five traits that I described? If you look through the dictionary at all of the different adjectives that you can use to describe somebody, you're gonna come up with at least 4,500. There are so many ways of describing what somebody is like. And if scientist A is looking at one concept, 
and scientist B is looking at a totally different concept than scientist C who's looking at something else and everybody's looking at different things, how are you supposed to build your science? Nobody's looking at the same stuff. So what the big five personality traits have given personality scientists is a way to describe personality in a very broad way, actually. Like the, the big five personality traits, while it might seem uh, kind of restricting because you only have five traits, each trait is actually pretty broad. But it really gives scientists a way to all be looking at the same thing in their research. So when we do personality science, we can actually build off of each other's results. And that's so important um, for personality scientists to all be looking at the same things for that reason. Because there's just no way that we could conduct research on 4,500 traits. We would never get anywhere. <laughs> so the big five traits are, they're popular for a reason. But I think that's everything that I have for you today. So please don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of content. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that notification bell if you want to be alerted as to when I upload new videos. I'm going to try to do at least one a week, I think. If you have any comments or questions for me, also please leave those down below. I will make sure to answer any questions on this video. Okay, well thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you next time.